How are your social skills? Are you a young professional who is grinding it out and could use more interactions in your social circles? Need some help to level up your social skills? Then this video is for you. Yeah. In today's video, we'll be sharing tips on how to elevate your social skills, which will elevate your life. We'll jump into the importance of your social health, how to get started on your social skills, as well as tips and tricks to cultivate your relationships. If you're new, hi, my name is Luki, and I create educational videos on jobs, careers, and life. If you're looking for some practical tips, advice, and life lessons, subscribe to stay up to date. We've been actively working on e-learning courses in the Focus Inspired Academy, and feel free to check them out in the link in the description box below when you have a chance. And make sure you stay until the end to get all the tips to level up your social skills. Let's first talk about why social skills are important. Social skills are critical for your health, and career success. You can find tons of research out there on the benefits of your social network. Research on the blue zones, which are areas of the earth where there are more centenarians, which are people over the age of 100, than any other place in the earth. And those reports have cited that social relationships are one of the pillars for a long life. And in those areas, it's not just about a long life, but it's also about long health. People with stronger social networks live longer, are healthier, and are happier. They also tend to be more successful. Research from Gallup has showed that the best predictor on whether an employee is engaged at work is whether they have a work best friend. Someone at work that they don't just work with, but they can speak about their personal and professional challenges and opportunities as well. Plus, people with a stronger network tend to have more opportunities as well. As the saying goes, it's not what you know, it's who you know. You might be saying, sure, Luki, that sounds great, but what about me? I don't have a network and my social skills need help. Well, that's all good. So let's start with a bit of a mindset shift. Think of the saying, the best time to plant a tree was 20 years ago. The next best time is right now. And even if you don't think you have a network, the slogan, you're richer than you think, comes to mind. Start by doing a network audit. Talk to Frank. Frank stands for the acronym FRIENDS relatives, acquaintances, neighbors, and kids. Brainstorm and write down everyone you know in these categories. And it doesn't have to be exhaustive. Just write a few and add to the list over time. For these relationships, give it a level out of five. If they're a level one and just a contact, it's someone that you just met and have their contact information, but they seem like an interesting person that you wanna to get to know a bit more. Level two is an acquaintance. You might have had a few interactions with them, but you don't really know each other too much. Level three is a casual connection where you've interacted multiple times. Maybe you've gone for a virtual or a coffee chat in a group or one on one. A level four is a colleague. You've had some frequent interactions and you've exchanged value. As a guideline, to get to this level, you might have interacted with that person on the order of 50 hours. Level five is a friend. These are folks that you're in contact with on a regular basis and love to offer and get help from. If you're finding this video useful, then why not join the Focus Inspired Academy, which is your gym for career confidence. Go deeper into these concepts and get group coaching to help and check out the link in the description box below for a free one month trial for supporting the channel. Now that you know who to connect with, let's get into the type of person you are and they are in the relationship. Social interactions have value based on attention, acceptance, and approval. Based on how these are provided or received, you can put a social interaction on a range of being a low value interaction or a high value interaction. There are typically four categories of social value interactions that people can have. First is supplicative, second is combative, third is competitive, and fourth is cooperative. Now the word supplicative is an old word that means to beg. Think of an interaction where someone you meet is begging for your attention, your approval, and acceptance. These are often the complainers, the folks that always want to commiserate with what's going on with their lives, the needy folks. And you can imagine that this would be a low value person who most folks don't want to be around. And an important realization is whether or not you are being a supplicative person around other people. The next category is combative where the supplicatives people beg for attention and approval and acceptance, the combative folks take attention, approval and acceptance. These are folks that don't want to share your attention with others. They take your approval with ultimatums. They're a little bit better than supplicatives, though combatives can be challenging to be around. 
The third category is competitive. While the supplicatives beg, the combatives take attention, the competitives one up you for your attention. You share a story about a great place that you ate at, and they share a story about a better place that they ate at. Relationships with competitive people can sometimes be beneficial as you're looking to become better and improve, but they can also be exhausting as you're always looking to do more and more. The last category is cooperative. The supplicatives beg, the combatives take, the competitives compete, and the cooperatives give. These are the folks that listen to your stories intently. They're genuinely curious and interested. They invite you into their interests and also partake in yours. These are the type of people that you want to be around. These are the high value behaviors that will foster social relationships. An important note is that if you exhibit those behaviors, then people will want to be around you too. For all of the relationships that you've noted, make a note if that person is any one of those types. Also note what sort of behaviors you tend to demonstrate in your interactions with them. It's okay to answer not sure, and perhaps all that means is that you need to spend more time with them. Circle the ones that you want to focus on, and ideally focus on the high value relationships. And you could try to level up some of the lower level relationships, or maintain and cultivate others, or change the interaction dynamics. Remember to share this video with a friend, and let me know if you have any questions or what you're struggling with in your career or job search, and feel free to connect with me on LinkedIn. Now that you've selected some folks to connect with, let's get into how you develop those social skills and how do you level up your social health. I recommend to start with allocating time. Just like you might set aside 60 minutes three times a week for your physical health, why not set aside three hours for your social health? For the folks that you circled, when will you see them next? If you'll see them soon within the next few days or weeks, then you might take some time to imagine the future interaction. How could you make it a high value interaction? If you won't see them soon, how about a bit of outreach to reconnect? How do you typically interact with them? Could you give them a call, send them a text message, or interact on social media? Something as simple as, how are you doing? I was just reminded of you and thought I'd say hi. You can give them a quick update on what you've been up to, maybe something that's interesting to them, and then ask for an update from them. And that's it, send. Even for folks that you haven't seen in years, they're often pleasantly surprised when someone reaches out. I had someone where I missed a message I had sent to them nine years ago over LinkedIn. I sent them a message and then we re-engage in conversation and we had lunch over the summer. We stayed connected and he's made some amazing introductions to me. If you want to level up that interaction, how about doing a value brainstorm? You can use Arcs T, attention, which you are already doing with that message, resources, is there a video, a blog post, a podcast, app, or something that's interesting that you could share with them? A connection. Is there someone you met recently that would be interesting for them to connect to? Skills. Is there something that you're reminded of that you could help them with? Or lastly, time. Could you spend some time researching on any of those to help them with? If you're struggling with your social skills, write your challenges in the comments below. Now, hopefully folks will start responding and you'll be able to interact with them. Be mindful of being a high value person in your interactions. Then take a bit of time after the interaction to reflect and improve. Ask yourself, what did you do well? Ask yourself, what would you do differently or better next time? And then plan to do both. Be sure to check the community tab to vote on which video you want to see next. And there you have it. The guidelines on leveling up your social skills, get started with a network audit and categorize them with levels and types, then reach out. Level up with a value brainstorm and high value behaviors. Don't forget to subscribe for more tips on jobs, careers, and life. And YouTube recommends that you check out these videos next. Until next time, be focused and stay inspired.